impulses, I'm sure. But there's a lot of praise in it for Beowulf by Beowulf. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about swimming. And long, long ago, and I mean long ago, I mean like in 1976, I embroidered the first line of this thing around the bottom of a gown of mine. <laughs> because I agree that when you're swimming, the water should not be warm. <laughs> well, I don't swim in the North Sea Harbor. <laughs> but when you are really, really good at something, I'm not that good at swimming, but Beowulf was, and a weasley coward says that somebody beat you at swimming in the North Sea. You do have to pre pre uh, you know, defend yourself, right? But uh, it's okay, I'm going to read it in English. <laughs> I could read it. Okay, this is the bit. Somewhere in here, it's, oh yeah. Sophie Tarega, that's mea strego maran achta that on Etham than any other man. I have more sea strength than any other man. Okay, now we go to English. Beowulf, and Shpeo's son replied, Well, friend Unferus, you have had your say about Greca and me, but it was mostly beer that was doing the talking. The truth is this, when the going was heavy in those high waves, I was the strongest swimmer of all. We'd been children together and we grew up, daring ourselves to outdo each other, boasting and urging each other to risk our lives on the sea. And so it turned out. Each of us swam, holding a sword, a naked, hard-proof proof blade for protection against the whale beasts. But Brecca could never move up farther or faster than me, from me than I could manage to move from him. Shoulder to shoulder, we struggled on for five nights until the long flow and pitch of the waves, the perishing cold, night falling and winds from the north drove us apart. The deep boiled up and its wallowing sent the sea roots wild. My armor helped me to hold out. Notice that he, he was swimming in armor. My head, heart ringed, chain mail, hand forged and linked. Whoops, I started to read it. I turned to the old, to the old. <laughs> A fine, close-fitting filigree of gold kept me safe when some ocean creature pushed me to pull me to the bottom, pinioned fast and swathed in its grip, I was granted one final chance. My sword plunged and the ordeal was over. Through my own hands, the fury of battle had finished all of the sea beast. Time and again, foul things attacked me, arcing and stalking, but I lashed out, gave as good as I got with my sword. My flesh was not for feasting on. There would be no monsters gnawing and gloating over the banquet at the bottom of the sea. Instead, in the morning, mangled and sleeping in the sleep of the sword, they swapped and floated like the oceans. From now on, sailors would be safe. The deep sea raids were over for good. Light came from the east, bright guarantee of God, and the waves went quiet. I could see headlands and buffeted cliffs. Often, for undaunted courage, fate spares the band it has not already marked. However it occurred, my sword had killed nine sea monsters, such night dangers and hard ordeals I have never heard of, nor of a man more desolate in surging waves. But worn out as I was, I survived, came through with my life. The ocean lifted and laid me ashore. I landed safe on the coast of Finland. Now, I cannot recall any fight you ended up with. 